In this video, we're going to discuss oxidation reduction reactions. So in the previous video, I mentioned that there are three classes of chemical reactions that virtually every reaction falls into. Uh, the first was precipitation reactions, the second was acid-base reactions, and we're gonna cover the last one, oxidation reactions here. Uh, oxidation reduction reactions here. These are also sometimes called redox reactions. Right, so that's just kind of a, a compound word that's built from oxidation and reduction. And sometimes you'll hear these referred to as redox reactions. So what occurs in an oxidation reduction reaction? Um, let's look at an example to highlight this. So uh, if we look at a uh, sodium solid, right? So let's say we have a sample of solid sodium. It can react with chlorine gas to form our familiar sodium chloride, right? So NaCl as a solid. So what's happening here? Well, we know that sodium and chlorine, when they form sodium chloride, right? Oh, and this is, yeah, so this is a solid, right? So it's gonna be held together by an ionic bond, right? So we know that when we, when we see this sodium chloride solid, what we're actually seeing here is Na plus and Cl minus as a cation and anion respectively, held together by charges. Now that's very unique from what we have in the reactants. In the reactants, we have just a solid sodium, right? Neutrally charged. And we have chlorine as a gas, as a diatomic gas, neutrally charged as well. So what's actually happening here is that we've got electrons uh, being transferred, right? So this guy, the sodium, actually loses an electron. And the chlorine is going to gain that electron. So that electron that's lost by sodium is gained by chlorine, right? So you end up with an electron transfer. So an electron is lost by a compound and gained by another compound. This defines a lot of reactions that occur in chemistry. Most reactions are just electrons flying around to different compounds, some get being gained, some being lost. Right. And keeping track of those is a huge part of being able to describe what's going on in a chemical reaction. So let's look at a different example. So let's look at the combustion of ethane. Right. So we know we're going to have ethane, C2H6. And since it's a combustion reaction, it's going to be reacting with O2 to give us CO2 and water. Right, so we have this combustion reaction, right? Um, can you track which uh, compounds where the, the electrons are being lost or gained? Well, if you don't see it, don't feel bad. It's, it's not easy to see. Um, it's very easy to see in this first example, right? Because we know that there's going to be a plus charge on the sodium, negative charge on the chlorine, so we can, we can see who gained and lost an electron there. But in this case, it's a little bit more ambiguous. We don't really know, at least offhand, which, which uh, compound, which atoms are being, you know, are gaining electrons, which ones are losing electrons. So in order to be able to track that and, and figure out which uh, atoms are gaining and losing electrons, uh, we have something called the oxidation state to keep track of these electrons. So oxidation states... And you may have heard about this before. You may have wrestled with this concept in uh, high school chemistry. Uh, but oxidation states, what they are, are just imaginary charges that we use as chemists to help bookkeep what's going on with, with electrons being transferred, right? So really it's just imaginary charge. To keep track of electrons. Right now, we know that in chemical reactions, bonds are being broken and formed. And the, the key piece behind uh, the oxidation state is that what it's doing is, is figuring out how the charge is going to be distributed based on whether an atom is more attracted to electrons or not. So let's, let's look at an example so I can show. So let's look at the water molecule, right? So if we have our water molecule, right? 
Um, when I introduced you to water, I, I noted that there was a polarity here, right? Because there was an uneven sharing of the electrons and that it would have these partial positive, partial negative charges, right? The oxidation state kind of formalizes this concept of unequal sharing of electrons. So for the case of water, oxygen, uh, th well, let's start with hydrogen. So hydrogen, we know that it's going to, um, you know, not be as attracted to the electron pair as oxygen because oxygen is more attracted to that electron pair. So we put a plus one oxidation state on each one of these hydrogens. And so that gives us a negative two oxidation state on oxygen, right? Basically formalizing this concept of the electrons being closer to oxygen, right? This is basically saying that it's going to have uh, more attraction to the electron pairs, right? So we give it this negative two oxidation state to be able to track what's going on with it when it in, is involved in a reaction. Right. So um, so that's the case of water. And there are some general rules, a few general rules to help you get started with um, assigning oxidation states. So the first rule is that if you have something that's just a single element, a single neutrally charged element, it has an oxidation state of zero. Right. So uh, any atom. Atom of an element, right? It's going to have an oxidation state of zero, right? And by just a single atom of an element, right? So I mean something like O2, right? That's just a single element, even though it's two oxygen atoms, it's still only one element. Or if you had like mercury or, or neon, right? If you see these in a chemical reaction, these guys have an oxidation state of zero, right? Um, so uh, the next rule is about monatomic ions, right? So these are single atoms, but they have a charge. If it has a charge, then the oxidation state is the exact same as its charge. So if you have a monatomic ion, it's going to have an oxidation state that's equal to the charge of the ion. Right. So, for example, sodium, if you have a sodium cation, that's going to have an oxidation state of plus one. If you have uh, barium two plus. Right. That's going to have an oxidation state of plus two. So um, so basically whatever the charge is on that ion, that's the oxidation state as well. Right. Um, now, a few atoms appear so commonly in chemical uh, compounds that we have these really hard and fast rules for these guys. So. Fluorine always has an oxidation state of negative one, right? So negative one is your oxidation state on fluorine. For oxygen, its oxidation state is typically minus two. Um, there are some cases where it can be minus one when it's a peroxide, but you'll, you'll encounter those cases and problems, and we'll go through those. But typically, um, its oxygen is just minus two. And uh, for hydrogen, it has an oxidation state of plus one, right? So with this set of rules, uh, you have pretty much what you need to get started with, um, with assigning oxidation states in a, in a wide range of compounds. So let's look at a few examples to show. So uh, first, let's look at CO2. So for the case of CO2, we have these oxygens. We know that each one of those is going to have a negative two uh, oxidation state. So negative two for each oxygen, right? So that means if we have two oxygens, then each of then these together have a negative four oxidation state. So that means for our carbon, right, we have to balance that out. So that carbon must have a plus four oxidation state. Right. So basically, you want to think about this the same way you would think about charges. Right. So if you have, you know, these if you have a charge that's a negative one charge, then the other component of that compound must have a plus one charge. Same thing here with oxidation states. These oxygens um, sum up to equal negative four for its total oxidation state. Carbon is going to have to have a plus four to balance that guy out. Let's look at uh, methane, CH4. 
We got four hydrogens. We know that each one of these guys is going to have a plus one oxidation state looking at our rules, right? So each hydrogen is going to have a, a plus one. So that means in total, when you sum up all four hydrogens, that's going to be a plus four. So now carbon has a negative four oxidation state in this uh, compound, right? So here we see carbon in two different situations and it has two different oxidation states. This is not uncommon. There's plenty of atoms that can have multiple different oxidation states, right? So, um, so this is not uncommon. You'll see some elements in, in some compounds that have a certain oxidation state and it could have a different oxidation state in another compound. Uh, let's look at an example that doesn't involve carbon. So let's, let's look at uh, Al2O3, so aluminum oxide. Um, if, if we look at this guy, right? So again, starting with the oxygen, this is gonna have a negative two for each oxygen. So uh, since we have three oxygens, that means that we have a total contribution of negative six from this O3. So that means that each one of these aluminums is gonna have to be plus three in order to balance that out, right? So for each aluminum, it'll have to be plus three so that that guy, the Al2 is positive six, the O3 is negative six, so that uh, handles the oxidation state for this guy. Okay, so we have this system to be able to track um, electrons on atoms that are involved in covalent bonds via the oxidation state, right? So how does this actually help us? Well, let's look at an example. How does this help us in chemical reactions? So let me write back up that uh, combustion of ethane, right? So if we have two C2H6 plus seven O2, that gives us four CO2 plus six H2O. Okay, so we can use this oxidation state machinery that we just built up in order to track uh, to changes in electrons throughout this reaction. So let's do it. Let me switch to a different color here. So let's assign oxidation states for every single atom, reactants, and products, right? So for the hydrogens, right, from our rules, we know that it's got to be plus one for each, uh, each hydrogen, right? So that means this guy has a total of plus six. Uh, so that means each of our carbons is going to have to be negative three, for each carbon, right? So that gives us oxidation states for ethane. Now for O2, O2 is just an element, right? Again, it's, it's two atoms, but it's a single element. So this guy, based on our rules, it's gonna have an oxidation state of zero, right? Now, if we turn ourselves to the products, right? We have CO2, each of these oxygens is gonna be negative two. So that's for each oxygen. And if we look at the carbons, right, uh, in order to balance that out, right, so these are, there's going to be two of these oxygens that each have negative two, so that's going to be a total contribution of negative four. So that means for carbon, we're going to have to assign a plus four oxidation state for that guy. Now for water, last one, we got negative two for this oxygen. Uh, each of these hydrogens is plus one, so that guy balances out. So we've assigned oxidation states for every single atom that's involved in this process. So now how can we use this in order to track what's going on? Well, if we look at ethane, right? Let's look at this carbon. This carbon starts with a negative three oxidation state, right? It ends up with a plus four oxidation state. So this is basically telling you that this carbon atom went from having a lot of electrons that's more attracted to it to now being involved in a bond where it's not attracting those electrons. So it's actually losing electrons in a formal sense. So we say that this ethane, right, C2H6, loses electrons. So ethane loses electrons. When something loses electrons, we say that it's been oxidized, right? So this guy has been oxidized. It's lost electrons. It is oxidized. And for O2, right, it goes from an oxidation state of zero, right, to in the products, now it, all these oxygens have negative two um, oxidation states. So since it got more negative, 
that means it gained electrons, right? It went from a situation where it didn't have any special attraction to electron density, it's just off by itself, and now it's readily pulling electrons from the carbon and hydrogen. So for O2, we say that this guy gained electrons. So this gains electrons. And when something gains electrons, that's the other piece of this, this guy is reduced. Right, so that's where the name oxidation reduction reaction comes from, right? Um, it involves some species that is going to be oxidized and some species that's going to be reduced, right? And this is going to carry over to any oxidation reduction reaction, right? So whenever something is oxidized, right? Just as a general summary of this, if something's oxidized, that means it loses electrons. Right, so oxidized loses electrons and its oxidation state is going to increase, right? As far as uh, total number, right? Going from negative three to plus four is an increase, right? So its oxidation state increases. And what we, and so since it aids the reduction, right? Because uh, in order for this guy to be reduced, it has to gain electrons. It must get those electrons from the other reactant. So we call the species that, that is oxidized, we call it the reducing agent. Right, so in this example, C2H6 would be the reducing agent. Right, it is being oxidized, so that means that it's helping with the reduction. That's why we call it the reducing agent. Now, um, the same thing for being reduced, right? All of these guys are just the opposite. So when something's reduced, it gains electrons. Its oxidation state decreases. And we call this guy the oxidizing agent. Right, so in this example, O2 would be the oxidizing agent. Right, so, um, so whatever's being oxidized, reducing agent. Whatever's being reduced, oxidizing agent. Oxidized, loses electron, reduced, gains electron. So there's a, a simple acronym that's used to, to try to remember this. Um, and it's called oil rig. And this might help you remember and keep straight in your mind what's going on here, right? So oil rig. So the O in oil rig stands for oxidation. Oxidation is loss, right? So that just means oxidation is loss of electron. Oxidation is lost. And then rig is reducing is gain. Right, so oxidation is lost, reduction is gain, oil rig. So you can kind of keep that um, little mnemonic device in your back pocket if you ever get confused on these, right? Um, but okay, so that's, that's the last of these, this uh, set of three classifications of reactions that are gonna be important when studying solutions chemistry um, and where you can classify a large portion of chemical reactions based on what goes on in the mechanism, whether it's electrons being transferred, protons being transferred or donated, um, or a precipitate solid being formed. Um, so this gives you a very broad range of classifications to be able to classify chemical reactions, um, the last of which is this idea of a redox reaction.